Thank you for coming to my presentation today. I'm Byung Do Hong from KAIST. Today, I'm going to talk about vulnerabilities of ID, ID management in cellular networks. More specifically, despite reallocation of temporary identifiers called GUTI, I show that a third party can locate a victim. This is joint work with sang and my advisor, Yongde. Before discussing vulnerability, Let's talk about background of a cellular network. As you know, a mobile device and a base station communicate through an air interface. Let's take an example of a voice call service in cellular networks. When someone calls one device, all base stations within a tracking area search the device through a procedure called paging by using the device's identifier. Uh, for example, when I call Yongde, all cell towers in a tracking area send a paging message saying that, Yongde, are you here? Which is, when he is within the tracking area, Yongde's phone responds, yes, I'm here. Which is the paging response message. As I said, uh, as I said, paging requests must include an identifier. As I said, paging requests must include an identifier. In this example, Yongde. Note that this paging message is not encrypted. In other words, all contents in the paging messages can be eavesdropped. When an attacker catches this identifier, she can check if, the, if this identifier is within the tracking area or not. In other words, if an attacker can match the identifier with a person, she can check if the victim is within the location area or not. In summary, matching identifier with a person is a location privacy threat. Now, what kinds of identifiers in the cellular networks? There are two types of cellular network, two types of identifiers in cellular networks, permanent ID and temporary ID. The IMZ is a unique permanent identifier corresponding to a SIM card. If this IMZ is repeatedly used, as I explained in the previous ex examples, one can break location privacy. Therefore, a temporary identifier is assigned to each mobile device. TMZ for 2G and 3G, and GUTI for LTE. In other words, the purpose of these temporary identifiers is to hide subscriber's, identi subscriber's identity. However, Previous work in this area shows that temporary identifiers still break location privacy. The first work in this area is Yongde's work at NDSS 2012 against GSM. In GSM, the network did not update temporary identifier for voice call. Suppose victim Yongde has a temporary identifier, dead V. In the first step, an attacker calls Yongde. Note that the attacker cannot know Yongde's temporary identifier. The, the network then sends a message to find him across location area, one where Yongde was last located. The attacker who located with Yongde collects all temporary identifiers in the location area. The temporary identifier used here is TMG. In the case of LTE, GUTI is used. This procedure is repeated multiple times. Then, how can this attacker find Yongde's identifier? Let's look at this figure. Note that the temporary identifier is not changed in the previous work. Therefore, by checking the inter intersections of identifier sets after dialing, it is possible to know whether a Yongde exists in the location. If the same team's dead beef appears after dialing, uh, after, uh, <coughs> if the same team's dead beef appears every time a attacker calls, the attacker can know that Yongde is in the same location area as an attacker. Interestingly, big team cannot notice this attack since an attacker, attacker terminates call before ringing. The, this method is called a silent call. At NDSS 2016, Shai Gero introduced the same vulnerability in LTE. 
In German networks, Guti has not changed it for voice call. How do we prevent this attack? The simplest solution is to change these temporary identifiers every time a call com completes. And this is already implemented. LTE introduced a control procedure, GUTI reallocation, to reassign a GUTI. Now then, is GUTI reallocation the solution to avoid location tracking? It is yet, but that is in the detail. In the last of this talk, I show that GUTI reallocation procedure in different tech hosts have serious problems. First, we collected data for traffic analysis. To do this, we used a few tools, a commercial diagnostic monitor, and a tool called SCAT we developed were used to collect and analyze devices' control play messages. To analyze the page message of a broadcast channel, open source library, SRS LTE, and software-defined radio, USRPP210 were used. Here is the data we collected. For about three years, we collected data from 28 carriers in 11 countries using a total of 78 UCIMs. The total number of voice calls was over 50,000, and the number of signaling messages was over than 6 million. As you know, these countries are leaders in telecommunication. How about the result? We already know that location tracking is possible if the GUTI is not changed. In this work, we show that location tracking is possible even for changing temporary identifier. In the experiment, we found that a total of 19 carriers out of 28 carriers used partially fixed bytes after GUTI reallocation. 19 among 28 carriers. Now, the attack is very simple. Just look for fixed bytes. We consider only the fixed bytes, then attack method is the same with the previous works. Let's look at a few examples. This figure shows the GUTI reallocation of a Dutch carrier for a single customer. This figure shows, a, shows changes of one byte in GUTI. The x-axis represents the number of call, and the y-axis represents the byte value. Can you see something strange? As you can see, a Dutch carrier fixed three bytes in the GUTI. Let's take one more example. Do you see it? Yeah. This Belgian carrier has two bytes fixed and one monotonic call increasing byte. In summary, out of 28 carriers, 19 carriers use some of the bytes that are fixed in GUTI reallocation. How about the rest of the nine carriers? I was suspicious because I know that techos often make mistakes. So I tried something different by revisiting four carriers. Our approach was stress testing. The stress test here is a simple way to reduce the time interval between repeated calls. Hard stress test here is a method of dialing and calling without waiting. The result, as you expect, the network skips GUTI reallocation. This figure shows a change in the GUTI reallocation of a one Korean operator. As you can see, Suddenly, the network skips GUTI reallocation after 10 random assignments. In stress testing, the network omits GUTI reallocation after normally 3 to 10 voice calls. All of the operators that we conducted this stress test showed similar results in reusing GUTIs. How about the rest of five operators? Because Yongdae's funding expired, we could not be there, but I can estimate the rest will be the same. To check if a victim is located in a specific area, we need different number of calls because the number, because the number of fixed bytes are different. This figure shows a required number of calls covering 
success rate for location tracking. Even if only two bytes are fixed, you can find a user with less than five calls. This is pretty useful when I want to check if my advisor is as cool or not. Using this attack, I checked if Yongdae is a kaist. These captured messages are observed in device and broadcast channel respectively. Once I know the operator of Yongdae's mobile device and phone number, Korean operator's pacing policy, and location of base stations. Nowadays, an open source Open source database such as OpenSignal reports both cell ID and location code over the world. Google's geolocation API also provides cell ID and location code in LTE tracking area code. As you can see, device's identity and broadcast channel's identity are the same. The broadcast channel receiver can capture the booty when the user receives the call. As you can see, I was able to check Yongdae's location. How can telco prevent this attack? Guterio location procedure must be secure. What are the requirements? First, temporary identifier must be changed per service request. Second, identity relocation losing must be unpredictable. A lightweight, cryptographically secure pseudo random number generator such as hash DRBZ could be used. Of course, ideal location should not cause collisions and should be resistant to stress testing. It would also be better if it was implemented at low cost. For details of our solution, please refer to our paper. Despite previous warning that insecure temporary identifier may break location's privacy, the current Guterio location procedure is insecure. 19 of 28 carriers worldwide fixed a few bytes in Guti. Four carriers we revisit were vulnerable to stress testing. From these vulnerabilities, location tracking is also possible in cellular networks. We also propose a lightweight secure Guterio location logic in our paper. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, Patrick Trainer again. Uh, cool stuff. Uh, question for you, any insight from the providers? The, the 19 that you found who were doing this um, fixed byte reuse, were they using the same core equipment, or you know, did you get any kind of understanding as to why this was happening in certain networks and not others? That I've spent so much time reading these standards. I haven't seen anything in the standards that would say that they need to do this kind of thing. Yeah. So let me answer the question. So, so there are only a few device manufacturers. Sure. And I think this may be because of the device manufacturer's problem. Yeah. And, but apparently we got feedback from a couple of uh, operators. And bec we did uh, anonymize mm -hmm. the telcos, but they were able to identify which one was theirs. <laughs> so probably I think this is a telcos configuration. Okay. So it is not clear, actually. it is. The standard does not talk about, you know, right. how how to implement it. Yeah, but it seems that actually there are a lot of similarities. That's great work. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi guys, uh, Ben Zhao, University of Chicago. Um, so this is really interesting work. Um, it's been a while since I've refreshed on my LTE um, protocols. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the equipment you use to to eavesdrop on the beacons? I was under the impression that at least for some type of signals, you need membership inside the protocol to be able to decode the 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 signals from the base station. Oh, okay, okay. So you're talking about the device. Yeah. So I, I saw. Um, yeah. Uh, so now, actually, there are a lot of open source, uh, open source softwares where you can collect data. And also, uh, so for example, QXDM is a Qualcomm's diagnostic monitor. 
And we also implement our own uh, diagnos diagnostic monitor called SCAP. And so using, I mean, there are, um, there's also one from Purdue, Chuni, Chuni Peng, also mobile insight. mobile insight. And you can use that to collect uh, signaling information. And, and do you need specialized radio hardware? No. Is these free, no. frequency agile radios? I mean, no? It works with uh, most of the phone calls. Uh, so ah, Qualcomm, okay. Qualcomm chipsets and Samsung chipsets, and there are a lot of supports already. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, nice work. So can you please uh, tell the exact, the 3 gbp specification that, that you actually exploited uh, for this attack? Like you have interleaved, you have do, done some stress testing and you have interleaved so, uh, Guti reallocation and paging messages. So, and for, yeah. so 3 gpp specs says you should change your uh, Guti in the Guti reallocation. Right, right. It doesn't say how. Right. But and that's uh, how they implement For some of the network operators, you have forced the uh, network operator to abort the Guti reallocation procedure by interleaving the paging messages. Is that correct? Like, if I... I don't understand you. So, for some of the attacks that you have shown, like, you have forced the mobile operator to abort their Guti reallocation procedure, like, by interleaving the paging messages. Oh, you mean like like how did you do the stress testing? That's that's the question. Oh, stress testing. Right. We just call. I mean, we just make call without waiting. So, okay. so there's a weak stress testing and hard stress testing, mm -hmm. and the difference between the weak and hard is how long we wait. Okay. And in case of hard stress testing, we didn't wait at all, and we just make uh, automatic calls. And of course, to make these kind of calls, you cannot use your phone. Right, right. I mean, you should use like a client, right. SRS, like uh, SRSUE to make right. calls. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.